This is Dave Meltzer with Entrepreneurs the Playbook and coming from the rays of sunshine, Wendy Yang. She is the president of Decker's Lifestyle Performance Brands, including Hoka, Teva, Sanook, all my favorite ones. I'm here in San Diego at South Mission Beach. Unfortunately, it's closed, so I can't see any of your products walking by like I normally do. I'm sorry, Wendy. It's quite all right. I'm just up the road in, uh, in Santa Barbara, not too, too far away. No, well, it looks beautiful. And we both were talking, you know, we're finally out, out of the house. Uh, I'm coming out of the closet, uh, been there all week <laughs> doing and producing things. And you decided to go outside. How important is it with the constricted uncertainty that we're in? I always say it's an expedited uncertainty. Uh, how important it is to change the scenery? Well, yeah, exactly. Right. I mean, we've been uh, working from home now for just about two weeks and I feel really fortunate. My, my husband and our three daughters all came back from work and from school. So we're all together. Um, but we're carving out different parts of the house to, to try to do our thing because everyone's working from home. And yeah, I, after a little while, you realize, and I was saying to my husband yesterday, you know, you miss the interaction with your colleagues of just walking to the restroom and seeing someone or getting going to the kitchen area or stopping by someone's desk to check in. Um, and so I've been sort of holed up in one little room in our house. And today I was like, I got to get outside. I mean, it's beautiful out and I do need a change of scenery. We all do. Yes. Yeah. Well, you're, I mean, we have three daughters as well. I took in my niece and I have a nine year old. My biggest, uh, business issue is bandwidth. And I'm not talking about my personal time. I'm talking about, you know, serious bandwidth because everybody has online school. I got two college students, elementary school, junior, you know, everybody's flowing through my internet. Um, what other issues, and, and that can be an issue as far as business, what other issues besides that type of bandwidth are you seeing from entrepreneurs, freelancers, and employees? Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's staying connected, right? You, you I think we overest or underestimate how much work happens by just drive-bys and, and seeing someone in the hall and going, oh yeah, hey, what about this? Um, so staying super connected, having really good communication, uh, it's just so important in everything we're doing today and making that extra step because I think the magic is always what happens in the in-between areas and those are the areas we really have to shore up right now. Yeah, that uh, spiritually, mentally, intellectually, physically, that, that area that, that is really important is that difference, that, that uh, what I see, that separation that's occurring. Um, now, you grew up with a professional athlete as a father. You were a professional tennis player. You are someone, you know, from doing research and, uh, you know, we were talking about how tight the circles are in the shoe industry. Uh, from talking to my friends, you're someone that knows really is known for investing, you know, in believing and betting on yourself. And that's something that I think is really important as well today. And always as an entrepreneur, you know, what are the type of things today do you think people should be betting on uh, as we stabilize right now, but prepare for the future? Well, you know, I just to clarify, I bet on myself to build great teams and I bet on those teams to do great things. Um, and, and I am super proud of the teams that I have, and they are doing great things. Um, so, yeah, I mean, get making sure that we have the right people um, in the right seats, doing the right things to lead us through, to take advantage of opportunity. I mean, that's where, that's where things be, begin, certainly, first and foremost. And, you know, gr growing up, what are some of the skills uh, that you feel are important that you've transferred over. We have a lot of obviously athlete entrepreneurs yeah. and I'm trying to transition a lot of vets, a lot of uh, athletes who share similar behavioral characteristics and incentives and, and inspiration, but you've been able, which is really difficult to cross over, you know, from a professional level of athletics into a, an extreme academic, uh, but then even transfer that into you know, being a, an extraordinary entrepreneur and entrepreneur and now executive of a really big company, you know, wh where do you see those skills carrying over for you? Well, thank, thank you, first of all, thank you. Um, right. Yeah, I mean, you know, I learned so much from my experience playing sports, whether that was, you know, growing up and competing 
you know, prior to college or during college or after college. Um, and I think, you know, we learn so much when we put ourselves on the line. Um, we also, I, I'm a firm believer, you learn more from your losses than from your wins. And, you know, as long as you learn from your losses and you're not defeated by them, I mean, these are great experiences that if you're able to translate those into every aspect of your life, um, it, it, it serves you really, really well. And for, for me, and I think for most athletes, it is a foundation of who you are. And no matter where you may be in your, your life or your career, it's those kind of foundational um, pillars that they stay with you. And in, in tough times like we're in right now, um, you draw on your resilience as an athlete. Um, you know, that ability to like, okay, bounce back or that ability to realize how deep you can actually dig. And I think having that physical experience to realize that you can reach another level physically, that teaches you that you can also reach another level mentally um, because the two go so, so hand in hand. And so I'm super thankful for the experiences I have had as an athlete. And, and I think I call and draw upon them, you know, daily and never more than now. One of the things too I see, uh, and I deal with a lot of executives and do executive business coaching, is the idea of potential. And mm -hmm. you know, as an athlete, it's really interesting because potential is very apparent. You know, I always joke around that the time in my life I reached closest to one of my potentials was when I was an average Division three football player. But considering my quantum nature and my being, that's as close to my potential as I could be. And you know, you hit the level of, of apparent in tennis, you know, and in, in, in ranked in tennis, et cetera. But there was a point where, you know, th this was getting futile, the negative energy of, you know, not being able to be number one in the world and beat Maria Sharapova, you know, you came to a realization that maybe I should use these skills, knowledge, and desire towards something that I have a higher potential for. And then obviously as a leader, you're trying to uh, incentivize and inspire your team to reach their potential. I think it's a key component of a leader to not only identify for her or himself what their potential is, but even more importantly, to distinguish the potential of others when they're in the right position, the wrong position, or, you know, for example, right now, some people, their potentiality and their being may not bode well in the circumstance. How do you deal with potential first personally and then as a team leader? So I think that's a great question. Um, you know, and I think we're all, we're all still learning that, right? You're still learning about as different things come your way, how you can flex and expand and grow into your potential. Um, but, you know, as a leader, you know, I think hiring great talented people, but finding the right seat for them is super important. And, and, and you start with what the org design needs to be and then find those, those people that fit your need. But, you know, it's so important and it can be a, a little nuance. You could have someone who's really, really good, but they're just not the right fit in their particular seat. And so do you find another seat for them or do you change the role for them? That can be a little dicey, but um, some people are good enough that it's, it's worth doing that for. And, and I think today, you know, with business models changing, um, and I do believe this current experience we're in, we'll come out the other side of it, no doubt but consumer behavior will have changed and it will have changed for good certain aspects of it there will be changes that 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 stay because of this experience we're all having and so as you look at sort of your 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 bench right now if you will you know you have to be looking at them and thinking about okay who who on your team is really suited to help take us into this next chapter and and who's going to help us kind of rejigger our playbook to make sure that we come out of this, not just come out of it, because we'll come out of it, but that we come out of it on top, ready to look ahead to what the next challenge is going to be, because it's a different landscape now. You know, you bring up a really good point. I've done a ton of different interviews, and the fact that we're doing this interview via Zoom is proof that we're going to do things differently, because the ego of both uh, the producers and everyone involved with my show, they never would let me do anything digitally. It was all about in person, and after this experience, there's no doubt in my mind uh, that I'll continue to do interviews in this respect, as well as in person for various reasons. So the entire format of 
my show has changed for the better for the future, but I hadn't thought about how internally my employees, which ones, their strengths now have become weaknesses and other employees, some of the weaknesses they have are extremely, uh, are superpowers. Right. And I think, I think it's an important message for entrepreneurs and leaders out there to look uh, at not only the current status of what we're doing, but where some new shining lights are, lessons are, and you know, we, how we can take advantage uh, to be more efficient and effective. Uh, now, obviously, the shoe industry will not stop. I, I'm in the sports and entertainment field, and I keep telling people, just wait. There are going to be long lines you know, for, for everything. You know, it'll all come back, and I promise you, you know, there's a bunch of sneaker and shoe heads out there that are standing in line. There's a pent up oh, yeah. demand for, for things. Um, as much as we have a demand right now on our um, our uh, hospital and, and first responder abilities, there's gonna be an equal problem, I think, pent up uh, business. And are you? there's some advice on, you know, we gotta be prepared because, you know, it's it, it can damage our business when too many people wanna buy our stuff and we're out of stock. Yeah, right now, really um, managing our inventory and flow and sort of have, trying to predict what, when things, that is a, that is definitely a challenge that we're all dealing with. But I, I think you're, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, um, pit, pivoting and, and, you know, adjusting is, uh, yeah, it's, it's going to challenge, certainly challenge all of us. I'm a very firm believer that strong brands um, survive and ultimately thrive. Um, and, but also, you know, I think there can be a real tendency in tough times to um, just sort of recoil and try to just survive. But it's the truly innovative thinkers that come out the other end, um, bigger, better, faster, stronger, uh, without a doubt. But yes to everything you said about pent up demand. And, and we're seeing some of that already as, you know, we all, we're working from home and we're thinking, but exercise is such an important thing for all of us. And, you know, running kind of grassroots type exercise because we all can't go off and maybe do the, the specific things we were once doing. So getting back to basics, um, yeah. And running's a big part of that. Yeah, I'm at, I've never run so much in my, <laughs> in my life. I'm out of the gym and on the road, I feel like Sugar Ray Leonard. I called him the other day. I was like, man, now I know it's like to be a boxer. This is incredible. I'm on the road every morning and they're empty. Um, uh, moving forward though, you know, th through just normal advice, um, you did grow up, and I'm always intrigued uh, with a parent that played uh, professional baseball. And I always say, I wish, you know, I could take all the sage advice that my parents had given me and put them into the context of business. Can you share with us what, one of the pieces of advice that your father had given you that, you know, you utilize in the business world today? Well, you know, I think it's back to that sort of, you know, learn from your losses, but don't be defeated by them. I can remember back, you know, hearing, you know, hearing my dad talk, you know, maybe it was a day after a game that he had lost. And I could remember him saying to my mom, you know, oh yeah, no, I pitched well. I, I, I made, I made three or four bad pitches, but I pitched well. And I'm like, just as a kid to myself, I remember thinking, wow, I mean, he lost. It's in the newspaper that he lost. But to him, he was, yeah, he took what was good about it and was learning from what he didn't do well. And uh, I think that served him, yeah, it served him really, really well. Last question about discipline. You know, to be a great athlete and a great executive, we're some of the most disciplined people, habits-driven people. How can we utilize this time to develop that ability, I call it a habit machine, or develop the ability to start creating better disciplines, even though some people feel there's more distractions, I think it's a perfect opportunity to develop those. What are some of the key tips that you've learned because you are so disciplined to inspire people to develop those disciplines? Yeah, I think, you know, to your earlier point about potential, like everyone has their own potential and, you know, the discipline to tap into it and not just like, like as an athlete, if you're on the practice court or the field or the track or whatever, you're not just putting in the workout and checking the box on the number of minutes or hours that you're working out. 
you're really putting in the time and digging deep to reach that next level. So what is that discipline you need to bring to yourself and your team in business to make sure that you're not just sending the email or sitting in the meeting, you're actually being part of creating change. And because that's where the growth happens. And so, you know, whatever that might be, I'm not sure I'm 100% answering your question, but getting people to realize, no, yeah, you sent the email. Yes, you were in the meeting. Yes, you made the presentation. But, you know, here's the things we need to build on to do better. And asking the question to the team too, like, what do you need more from me to help you with this? You know, I, I think is super important, super important. And I think you're a great uh, example of how a company succeeds through great leadership. And the same as in the sports field, I would say, when you look at a Robert Kraft to a Belichick to a Tom Brady, there's no doubt on why that team is successful. And I think you've instituted that into your business as well. And I certainly appreciate you sharing that playbook because a lot of people don't understand how essential it is where the cash and the culture carries down through your entire team into the consumer and with the brands like Hoka, Teva, and Sanook, I can now see your energy all the way down into being a customer myself, the energy that sits upon my feet uh, almost every day, at least here at the beach, every single day. So I certainly appreciate you sharing your playbook. We have Wendy Yang, unbelievable executive and entrepreneur with Dave Meltzer on Entrepreneurs, The Playbook.